dear students today we will discuss about the evolution of different life forms how different organisms has developed in different era conventional religious literature tells us about the theory of special creation this theory has three connotations one that all living organisms that is species or types that we see today were created as such second that the diversity was always the same since creation and will be the same in future also and the third one the earth is about 4000 years old all these ideas were strongly challenged during the 19th century based on observations made during a sea voyage in sail ship called hms beagle round the world charles darwin concluded that existing living forms share similarities to varying degrees not only among themselves but also with the life forms that existed millions of years ago many of such life forms do not exist anymore there had been extinctions of different life forms in the years gone by just as new forms of life arose at different periods of history of earth there has been gradual evolution of life forms any population has built in variation in characteristics those characteristics which enable some to survive better in natural condition that is climate food physical factors etc would outbreed others that are less endowed to survive under such natural conditions another word is used is fitness of the individual or population the fitness according to darwin refers ultimately and only to reproductive fitness hence those who are better fit in an environment live more progeny than others these therefore will survive more and hence are selected by nature he called it natural selection and implied it as a mechanism of evolution let us also remember that alfred balles a naturalist who worked in the malaya archipelago had also come to similar conclusions around the same time in due course of time apparently new types of organisms are recognizable all the existing life forms share similarities and share common ancestors however these ancestors were present at different periods in the history of earth means in different epochs periods and eras the geological history of earth closely correlates with the biological history of earth a common permissible conclusion is that earth is very old not thousands of years as was thought earlier but also billions of years old now comes to what are the various evidences for evolution with the help of them we can assume or assure ourselves about the process of evolution evidence that evolution of life forms has indeed taken place on earth has come from many quarters fossils or remains of hard parts of life forms found in rocks rocks from sediments and a cross section of earth's crust indicates the arrangement of sediments one over the other during the long history of earth different aged rock sediments contain fossils of different life forms who probably died during the formation of the particular sediment some of them appear similar to modern organisms they represent extinct organisms for example dinosaurs a study of fossils in different sedimentary layers indicates the geological periods in which they existed the study shows that the life forms varied over time and certain life forms are restricted to certain geological time spans hence new forms of life have arisen at different times in the history of earth all this is called paleontological evidences do you remember how the ages of fossils are calculated do you recollect the method of radioactive dating and the principles behind the procedure comparative anatomy 
and morphology show similarities and differences among organisms of today and those that existed years ago. Such similarities can be interpreted to understand whether common ancestors were shared or not. For example, whales, bats, cheetah and human, all mammals share similarities in the pattern of bones of four limbs. So, these four limbs perform different functions in these animals. They have similar anatomical structure. All of them have humerus, radius, ulna, corpels, metacorpels and phalanges in their four limbs. Hence, these animals, the same structure develop along different directions due to adaptations to different needs. This is divergent evolution and these structures are homologous organs. Homology indicates common ancestry. Other examples are vertebrate hearts or brains. In plants also, the thorn and tendrils of bougainvillea and cucurbita represents homology. Homology is based on divergent evolution, whereas analogy refers to a situation exactly opposite. Wings of butterfly and of words look alike. They are not anatomically similar structure, so they perform similar functions. Hence, analogous structures as a result of convergent evolution, different structures evolving for the same function and hence having similarity. Other examples of analogy are the eyes of octopus and of mammals or the flippers of the penguins and the dolphins. One can say that it is the similar habitat that has resulted in the selection of similar adaptive features in different groups of organisms, what towards the same function. Sweet potato with root modifications and potato with stem modification is another example of analogy. In the same line of argument, similarities in proteins and genes performing a given function among diverse organisms give clues to the common ancestry. These biochemical similarities point to the same shared ancestry as structural similarities among diverse organisms. Man has bred selected plants and animals for agriculture, horticulture, sport or security. Man has domesticated many wild animals and crops. This intensive breeding program has created breeds that differs from other breeds, for example, dogs, what still are the same group. It is argued that if within hundreds of years, man could create new breeds, could not nature have done the same over millions of years? Another interesting observation supporting evolution by natural selection comes from England. In a collection of moths made in 1850s, that is before industrialization set in, it was observed that there were more white winged moths on trees than dark winged or melanized moths. However, in the collection carried out from the same area, what after the industrialization, that is in 1920, there were more dark winged moths in the same area, that is the proportion was reversed. The explanation put forth for this observation was that predators will spot a moth against contrasting background. During post industrialization period, the trunk became dark due to industrial smoke and suits. Under this condition, the white winged moth did not survive due to predators. Dark winged or melanized moth survived. Before industrialization set in, thick growth of almost white lichens covered the trees. In that background, the white winged moth survived, what the dark colored moth were picked out by predators. Do you know that lichens can be used as industrial pollution indicators? They will not grow in areas that are polluted. Hence, moths that were able to camouflage themselves that is hide in the background survived. This understanding is supported by the fact that in the areas where industrialization did not occur, for example, in rural areas, the count of melanic moths was low. This showed that in a mixed population, those 
that can better adapt, survive and increase in population size. Remember that no variant is completely wiped out. Similarly, excess use of herbicides, pesticides, etc. has only resulted in selection of resistant varieties in a much lesser time scale. This is also true for microbes, against which we employ antibiotics or drugs against eukaryotic organisms or cells. Hence, resistant organisms or cells are appearing in a time scale of months or years and not centuries. These are examples of evolution by anthropogenic action. This also tells us that evolution is not a directed process in the sense of determinism. It is a stochastic process based on chance events in nature and chance mutation in the organisms. So my dear students, today we have discussed about the process of evolution and various mechanisms of evolution. Right from the theory of evolution by Darwin that is natural selection and the Bing's mouth in the London during the process of industrialization. In the next episode, we will discuss about the biological evolution and Hardy-Weinberg principle. Thank you.